Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my week 17 tight end rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season. On today's episode, of course, we're talking about all things related to the tight end position, beginning with matchups. We'll talk about which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing tight ends thus far this season on average in a half PPR scoring format. After that, of course, we'll talk about my top 16 tight end rankings. Now, the rankings that I put up on screen today may not be the identical rankings that I have by Sunday morning. Every single game this upcoming week will be on Sunday, uh, of course, to kind of prepare everybody for the following week, the NFL playoffs. But either way, the rankings that present on you know today's screen may not be identical because there are many players every single day as we progress through the week that are not only popping up on the injury report or potentially being deemed out for this upcoming weekend's games. I mean, even yesterday, I didn't even realize that Ben Roethlisberger would already have been the he deemed out for week 17. And I was talking about Juju and Deontay Johnson having huge weeks. I mean, with Mason Rudolph, that's not the case. It's just not the case at all. Even with Eric Ebron, he won't be on today's list because of the absence of a quarterback in that offense because Mason Rudolph, I can assure you, is not a good quarterback. But either way, the whole point is, even though I'm going to put up rankings today, rankings are always subject to change. If you're trying to stay up to date, make sure you show up 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time this upcoming Sunday, kickoff with Kirikov will be the final live stream during the regular season. Of course, we'll do live streams during the NFL playoffs and watch along, stuff like that. But either way, uh, if you're trying to get up-to-date rankings on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, get your questions answered before this weekend's championship games. Make sure you show up Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you very much. All right. Again, I want to thank you guys for your incredible support, specifically those of you who have still continued to come out here, even when you're not in a championship game. For those of you who are just coming out, to say what's up, to leave a like button, to just view, comment down below. I really do appreciate you. Uh, for those of you who continue to support the channel, thank you very much. If you have not yet already, click the subscribe button, join the community. We are on our way to continuing to grow this channel to bigger and better things to get me to at least get more and more help, you know, in terms of supporting the channel. Uh, the more help we can get, the, the better. So either way, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Make sure you comment down below, leave a like uh, down below. Really do appreciate it. All right. We're going through the tight end position, and we're beginning off with matchups. Of course, we're going to go through this quickly. The New, York, the New York Jets, of course, give up the most points. The Patriots don't have a tight end. The Cleveland Browns will take on Pittsburgh, but I don't trust Mason Rudolph to do anything. We have, of course, the Atlanta Falcons playing against Rob Gronkowski coming off of a ginormous week. He should be able to produce this upcoming week, unless Cameron Bright's going to steal some touches. The Jacksonville Jaguars, of course, giving up a bunch of points, but can we trust Indianapolis Colts tight ends anymore? Nope. That is not the case. The Chicago Bears, of course, have given up a bunch of points. That's great for Robert Tunyon, who definitely needs a little bit of a bounce back week in comparison to what he did this past Sunday night against the Tennessee Titans. Cincinnati Bengals, of course, all season long have been giving up a lot of points, and that's great because Mark Andrews is in line for a pretty big week this week with Lamar Jackson putting up some pretty big numbers as of late. The Buffalo Bills have obviously given up a lot of points, and I think Mike Gesicki will certainly be the number one receiving target for two of this upcoming week in that Miami versus Buffalo matchup that will determine potential playoff seedings and who's going to make the playoffs specifically of course we have the los angeles chargers giving up a lot of points but there won't be a starting tight end that i'm looking to go after on the kansas city chiefs as travis kelsey will be out this week of course on the other side kansas city will be playing against los angeles hunter henry still on the covid list not interested in that and the carolina panthers taking on jared cook that is a fantastic matchup now we've covered the majority of that we got some you know tampa bay we have carolina you know there, there's a lot of teams here that you might want to go ahead and take advantage of it and that might be the case, but purely we are playing the tight ends that we know and love. Of course, here are some of the tougher matchups. Regardless of some of these, we've seen tight ends dominate against these defenses before. We've seen big numbers being dropped. I mean, Green Bay gave up a touchdown to Johnny Smith this past week. Of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers in weeks past have given up themselves a pretty fair share of points to opposing, you know, running backs and tight ends the two positions that they were dominant against all season long but either way just giving you some perspective as some as for the matchups for this week now that we've covered that we can go and move on to our top 16 tight end rankings again this will be a little bit of a shorter video in comparison to what we usually do i talk on and on and on and i really just i can't stop talking but i've told myself this week we're going to go through it quickly because again it's pretty simple. We're starting our start. We're firing up the players that are in their best matchups that are getting a high volume of targets and are getting a lot of fantasy productivity going in their direction. So we're going to begin off with our number one, Darren Waller. Could we ask for anything more from Darren Waller? Probably not. He produces every week. And even in this tough matchup against Miami last week, he was still able to get himself so much utilization. The thing that I noticed is they kept going to the same play over and over again, and they continue to get him the ball 30 plus yards down the field. I mean, he is a deep threat. He is a red zone threat, and he is just getting a high volume of targets that 
really is always going to lead to his success. This upcoming week, they take on the Denver Broncos. Of course, he's produced against them in the past. I have no problem with this matchup. Again, Denver, they themselves, yes, they have a better defense, but they really just can't stop anybody at this moment in time. They're playing pretty much grasping at straws. At this point, that entire team is just playing for their pride. Uh, and I think Darren Waller, Derek Carr back in the lineup should be able to fire up a pretty good performance here. We have Mark Andrews as our number two playing against the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, the Cincinnati Bengals, they themselves have given up the six most points to opposing tight ends this season. Uh, just this past week, we saw Darren Fells make a, a nice appearance for the Houston Texans scoring a touchdown. That's how you know the Cincinnati Bengals give up points to the tight end position when a guy like Darren Fells is coming out of nowhere and scoring points. That's how you know that defensive coordinators or specifically offensive coordinators are keying in on going after the Cincinnati Bengals linebackers and safeties because they are not able to cover. I think Mark Andrews, of course, getting high volume of targets, even though he was not able to score a touchdown last week, had pretty good yard count. Uh, and ultimately, this week should be a great threat for this offense as they look to continue to you know score touchdowns and try to potentially make the playoffs. Again, Des Bryant has scored two touchdowns in the last two weeks. If those touchdowns go in the direction of Mark Andrews, potentially one of these times, again, he's upwards of 15 points every time. We move on to George Kittle as our number three. Now, even though I, I wanted to have George Kittle at number two, I'm going to be a little bit conservative with it. He was on a snap count last week, and even with that, he was unbelievable. This upcoming week, they probably won't have Brandon Ayuk. They probably won't have Debo Samuel, and they'll have C.J. Beathard. C.J. Beathard is a former teammate of George Kittle in college. He is going to throw to him nearly the entire time. I wouldn't be surprised if George Kittle finishes as the number one tight end this week. But again, they play against Seattle. It is a tougher matchup. That secondary has been playing a lot better as of late. But regardless, he is going to get funnel targeted at least a minimum of 10 targets, which will, of course, lead to eight plus catches, a good amount of yardage. And if you could put a touchdown on that, that's just the cherry on top. I think George Kittle, 100% a fantastic play this week. We have Logan Thomas as our number four. You know, when we talk about the tight end position, I, I think there was a lot of surprises this year in terms of players that broke out, like TJ Hawkinson, Robert Tunyon. These are guys that have been unbelievable all season long and have really established themselves as guys that next year are going to you know, demand draft capital in order to lock them down for your team. But Logan Thomas, a lot of you guys during the offseason told me, Andrew, what about Logan Thomas? And I thought to myself, well, yeah, he was the backup for the Detroit Lions. You know, he's going over to Washington. What has Washington got to offer for the tight end position? We haven't seen a relevant one in Washington since Vernon Davis was really cleaning it up, you know, many years back. But either way, Logan Thomas, my goodness, has been unbelievable this year. He is just, he, he's perfect. He's getting so many targets with Alex Smith back in the lineup, Terry McLaurin probably out. I mean, yes, they have J.D. McKissick getting probably the most targets amongst all of the receiving options on that team. But it doesn't bother me as long as Logan Thomas, he himself, is getting 10-plus targets. He's catching majority of said targets. And the yardage and the touchdowns, that is just only going to funnel in you know, as time progresses. Especially playing against the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that has struggled mightily in their secondary and specifically covering wide receivers and tight ends this year i think logan thomas is a for sure play we have robert tunyon like we mentioned a little bit earlier he's been unbelievable this season unfortunately snapped his five game streak of scoring a touchdown this past week against the tennessee titans it was an advantageous matchup but again they didn't require him to score because in the second half all they did was run the ball against a defense that really couldn't stop anybody so robert tunyon has the privilege of going against the chicago bears the last time he played against them this season had himself a pretty good game scored a touchdown so again could easily do something of a similar you know format i think it's a matter of whether or not he's going to see targets he really only needs five or six in order to establish himself a really good game because this offense is certainly going to get down in the red zone they put up a fat number against the chicago bears last time and then sat back and just ran the ball for majority of the contest i think that'll be the case this week of course one of those touchdowns like going to Devontae adams direction similarly the last week could have easily gone to any other receiving option on this team i think robert tunney will definitely benefit from that this week we have mike gesicki as our number six so here's the thing with Devontae Parker pretty much not even being relevant with Tua at the quarterback position and Jakeem Grant, you know, always being beat up. They don't have Preston Williams still. Who is really going to step up? I mean, Isaiah Ford is not a guy we can trust in. Lynn Bowden, though he has caught a couple passes here and there. Miles Gaskin is probably the best receiving threat outside of Mike Gesicki from what we've seen this season. Now, Mike Gesicki definitely wasn't healthy last week. But, of course, I think this upcoming week playing against the Buffalo Bills, the defense has given up a lot of points to opposing tight ends. I mean, even Noah Fant was able to score a touchdown against them and get himself upwards of six catches. That in itself speaks volumes to how much opportunity there is at the you know, tight end position against this team. And though the Buffalo Bills, they do have good linebackers. I mean, Edmonds, Milano, Klein, they still have good safeties over there. And still, they're giving up a bunch of points. Mike Gesicki has typically been, in this last you know four to five weeks of this offense, the number one threat. So I think they'll go back to the well. 
he should have himself a pretty good week. Rob Gronkowski's coming off of a week in which I literally was quoted to say, and I'll, I'll admit I was 100% wrong. I thought to myself and I said, there are a lot of mouths to feed in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense with Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Godwin, Fournette. How is he going to score when you have four other threats that potentially get more touches than him in that upcoming week matchup against Detroit? And was I wrong? Rob Gronkowski came out, scored a touchdown in the first half, then went ahead and had his touchdown in the second half. I mean, he, I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that. I mean, Gronk has been absolutely insane this season, coming out of retirement, putting up fat numbers, gets to take on the Atlanta Falcons that are giving up, again, some of the most points to the opposing tight end position. Of course, the last time these two teams played, Cameron Brait played a little bit more of a role in that uh, offense and got himself more targets and receptions. But I think Rob Gronkowski, who's a little bit on a but. Uh, a little bit of a hot streak as of right now after last week's game could potentially show out this upcoming week. We have TJ Hawkinson. Of course, this is my only caveat here. If TJ Hawkinson is starting, and of course, Matthew Stafford is in the lineup, which Daryl Bevel, the interim head coach for the Lions, has said and quoted to be have said that he's going to be potentially playing this week. If Matthew Stafford goes, then Hawkinson is my number eight and we're good to go here. If that's not the case and we're going to be you know playing with a backup quarterback against Minnesota, I'm less likely to trust Hawkinson, specifically at the number eight spot. I think I'd move him down to maybe 15 or 16. So again, I think Hawkinson, if in fact he's you know accompanied by a Matthew Stafford, getting himself seven, eight potential plus targets, he's going to get himself obviously work it down in the red zone. Without Kenny Galladay there, a lot of the work has gone to TJ Hawkinson this season, and I think he'll continue to progress and continue to get better. It's just a matter of who's playing quarterback this week for the Detroit Lions. All right, we have Noah Fan as our number nine. Okay, so here's the thing. In the last two weeks, Noah Fan has had 20 total targets, 11 the week prior against the Buffalo Bills, nine this past week against the Los Angeles Chargers. He's had pretty good games this past week and a half PPR, put up nine plus fantasy points. We'll take that any given moment. So the question is, what is he going to be able to accomplish against the Las Vegas Raiders? Again, the Las Vegas Raiders defense has been awful all season long. They've given up a lot of points to tight ends. Just recently, you know, Hunter Henry had himself a pretty good performance. Of course, Mike Gesicki wasn't able to have himself an upside performance this last week dealing within his uh, with his shoulder injury but I think as long as Noah Fant is getting targets late in the season he's going to continue to get himself opportunity and as long as Drew Locke's comfortable with it this offense with Pat Shermer as their offense coordinator is going to continue to throw the ball in that direction I think Noah Fant's not a bad player as a number nine we move on to number 10 Irv Smith Jr. coming off of a week against the New Orleans Saints in which he had two receiving touchdowns of course the question remains, what do we anticipate from this offense? Without Dalvin Cook there, I think Jeff, uh, Justin Jefferson, of course, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins are all going to succeed. And so is Irv Smith because there will no longer be an, you know, a presence of Kyle Rudolph once again this upcoming week. He's been already deemed out. I think Irv Smith getting majority of the snaps at the tight end position, getting a lot of targets and getting himself opportunity down in the red zone just speaks to how much success he could potentially have. We have Jared Cook as our number 11. Of course, the Carolina Panthers have been giving up touchdowns to everyone. I mean, literally everybody. Just go look at the last, I want to say, five to six games against the Carolina Panthers. Big yardage counts, big reception counts, and of course, touchdowns galore to a bunch of different tight ends. So the question is, where does Jared Cook land in this matchup? As the New Orleans Saints have to come in and, and have to win this game in order to lock down the number one seed in the NFC, I mean, it's going to have to, you know, be thrown. You're not going to be able to run the ball like you did the last week. Teams are going to key in on that. They're going to have to stop you. And though the Carolina Panthers are a team that you can certainly throw, I mean, run the ball against majority of the time, I think Jared Cook in the play action scheme is going to be the way to go. Without having a Michael Thomas, I mean, Emmanuel Sanders hasn't been that relevant. Of course, they have the the Swiss Army knife of a Taysom Hill that could potentially take away some value from Jared Cook. But I think, um, you know, his productivity, his red zone threat, you know, and prowess uh, continue to just lend him more and more value uh, as the weeks go on. I know he's put up a couple of dud performances in recent, um, you know, weeks. But to be honest, as of late, he has been more of a positive impact for teams uh, in fantasy than a negative one. We move on to Austin Hooper as a number 12. So like I mentioned it when the video began, the Pittsburgh Steelers will not be starting their starting quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, and I don't really anticipate them really fighting for that number uh, two spot in the AFC, considering, again, the Buffalo Bills will be starting their starting roster, and the Buffalo Bills beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in a head-to-head -head matchup. So, again, as long as Buffalo wins, regardless of Pittsburgh winning, they're going to get the number three seed in the AFC. So, they're going to rest majority of their players, and that is going to give the Cleveland Browns an opportunity to come and make the playoffs. So, they're going to try to jump in here with Austin Hooper, of course, one of their main receiving threats, who's gotten a lot of targets in the last couple weeks and a lot of opportunity leading to touchdowns. In my opinion, I think Austin Hooper, regardless of how good this defense has been in Pittsburgh against the tight end position this year, he is a huge you know, potential threat down in the red zone, specifically because, again, 
even though Pittsburgh against running backs as late has been success, you know, hasn't been as successful as they've been in the past. Uh, I think the play action will serve him well. And I think Austin Hooper should be a great play. We have Evan Ingram as our number 13. Again, Evan Ingram is a little bit of a tricky play. This past week, got himself pretty good yardage, pretty good points. I'll take that. And playing against the Dallas Cowboys, that's one of the easier matchups at the tight end position. We know that. I mean, it's just a matter of whether or not Daniel Jones is going to get him the ball. And I think that'll be the case this week. If I'm not mistaken, earlier this season when Evan Ingram and the uh, New York Giants took on the Dallas Cowboys, he only had like, what, two targets, one reception for 13 yards. Uh, That kind of performance, I mean, that's the one to forget. It really is at this point. So hopefully... Um, we won't see you know numbers similar to that because if that's the case, that's really going to hurt us. But overall, I still think that Everingham is a valuable tight end uh, target. And as long as this offense is continuing to have to pass the ball, uh, which they probably will be doing because the Dallas Cowboys will be putting up a, a pretty good volume of points. The running game doesn't really exist in uh, the New York Giants organization right now as of late. So they're passing the ball. Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, those are the main two guys. I see him as a pretty good play this week as our number 13. We move on to our number 14. We have Hayden Hurst. Of course, I think Hayden Hurst is a fantastic play, but it's all a matter of the matchup. He plays against Tampa Bay, giving up the 11th most points. Julio Jones is out. He's seeing more and more targets as the week progresses. And to be honest, that's all that I could ask for. Hayden Hurst, not a bad option. And he scored the last time he played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers two weeks back. John U. Smith has kind of, you know, reestablished himself. Scoring a touchdown against the Green Bay Packers really does give me some confidence. But again, if we go back to last season against Houston, has put up some great numbers. And also late in the season, John U. Smith was a goal line threat and was always a distraction when, in fact, you have to get down in the red zone. You're going to fake the handoff to Derrick Henry, hit him with the play action. John U. Smith's going to be open in the red zone. I think they'll continue to go back to that. That is one of their most successful plays down in the red zone. So, John Smith, not a bad option as a guy that you need a potential upside of a touchdown to find a successful week from. We have Dallas Goddard as our final option here as a number 16. So, Goddard as of right now, again, if he's healthy this week, I'm firing him up. But I leave him at 16 because I know he's not healthy and he didn't practice today. And when you don't practice, practice Wednesday and Thursday, Friday leaves the coin toss up. There's a potential that, again, this team is not fighting for a playoff spot. They might not want to play their tight end of the future. Again, they're not going to be re-signing Zach Ertz this offseason. So Dallas Goddard seems to be the guy that is going to be the you know the starting guy of the future. Why you know rush an injury back? Why potentially you know um, expose him to even getting a worse injury in the future? That's all I'm saying, and that's why I'm concerned about it. If, in fact, we need to adjust these accordingly, we will. But otherwise, these are my top 16 rankings for Week 17 of the 2020 Fantasy Football Season at the tight end position. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, which will be later this afternoon, talking about quarterbacks, I'll see you guys. Peace. (laughs) 